First up tonight is London-based Lucy Rout, who's freaking out at the thought of facing off with the dragons. What am I doing? OK. OK, come on. Oh, shit. I know my business and I understand the market. But to be really honest, the imposter syndrome is always going to be real. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit terrified. Dragons. Can you believe it? We're about to start series 20 of Dragon's Den. You've been here for the whole 20 years, and you look younger now than you did then. Oh, thank you, Tuka. Can you believe it, though? 20 series. Look what you started. If you'd been rubbish at the beginning, we wouldn't be sitting here now. Thank goodness you were good. <laughs> I've watched this show since I was a teenager, and I've seen firsthand the avenues that it can unlock. My biggest fear is letting a bit of a lack of confidence hold me back. Hello, Dragons. I'm Lucy, the founder of Taboo. I'm here today to pitch for a £50,000 investment for a 25% stake in my business. Following a reconstruction of my digestive system to remove a pancreatic cancer back in January 2020, I was told I'd need to take medication with food for the rest of my life. I was handed this very plastic pill case and sent on my way. Having previously enjoyed social settings, I suddenly found myself feeling very anxious and uncomfortable whenever food was involved, escaping to the bathroom to take my tablets in private. And for a very long time, I felt I had something I should be hiding or be embarrassed about. This really wasn't helped by the fact that when I searched the market for a beautifully designed, durable pill case, I was really, really disappointed to find next to nothing designed for people like me. So I decided enough was enough and I'm building a business and a brand to once and for all remove the taboo around medication. Thank you. Well, that's the pitch out of the way for nervous 27-year-old Lucy Rout. You need to take a deep breath. I know, I'm literally shaking. <laughs> yeah. Bye. She's looking for £50,000 in exchange for 25% of her business aimed at the 21st century tablet taker. And despite her internal jitters, her polished presentation has impressed Stephen Bartlett. Lucy. Hi. First of all, well done. Thank Incredibly you. inspiring story. And your pitch was phenomenal as well. Wow. Um, when did you launch Taboo? So I launched in the last week of September last year. OK, what's your turnover been so far? So turnover today is £10,431. Yep. We're very small, with a gross profit of around 7300 yep. and a net loss of minus 15000 If I may quickly explain that loss, in order to set up the business, I had to invest into stock. So I currently have over 4,000 units left of stock. How big is the, the market you're going after? Because this is a product that seems to be, from your words, designed for your demographic. The size of the market is very difficult to quantify. But anyone that basically needs to take medication on the go, in terms of scale, with a bit of money and a bit of support, this is a really scalable business and the market opportunity is huge. Lucy's confidence begins to climb as she pushes the potential of her pill case concept. Deborah Meaden has been familiarising herself with the product. It feels lovely. Thank you. And now she wants to get a grip on its margins. What do they sell for? Uh, £18. And what are they costing you? £4.80, which I'm going to very quickly, Tuka, if I may, looking at you, jump in. Because <laughs> I think coming. you're going to come to me and say, I could have made that in a factory for 75 cents, and I'm going to say, fair enough. Can I, can I say something? <laughs> sorry, no, sorry, Deborah. Can't. Can you concentrate <laughs> on me, please? Oh, Thank I'm you. Coming, Tuka, in, in, a minute, in a minute, go, go back to Tuka, but go right on. now, sorry, just, yes, I should on. follow my line of questioning. So what are you selling the for at wholesale? £9.60 at the moment, but by the time I've sold through the current stock, I will hopefully have sorted out manufacturing with my good friend Tuka here or any of you um, and the margins will become a little bit better. Right. Can I just go back to something you talked about in terms of profit? Yes. It'd be really helpful if you concentrated on me rather than winking at Peter and answering Tuka's questions. I'm so sorry. You talked about your stock levels yep. affecting your profit. Well, that's actually not correct. Pardon me if I was incorrect to do so. I used net profit and I took away the total cost of all of my stock in order to calculate that. 
if I was yes, incorrect. Yes, you don't have to do that. You're understating your profit. OK. So do you know how much stock you're holding? Yep, so set the, with the retail value of £79,000. What's the cost of that? About £15,000, yeah. £16,000? Yes, roughly. Which would have said your whole presentation would have changed. I've turned over £10,431. I've spent £3,000 in developing it and I've broken even. OK, understood. I apologize. That's an no, don't apologise. I'm just saying that's good news. OK, great. Lucy gets a ticking off, followed by some business advice, which for once has a positive outcome. Now, Tuka Suleiman wants to swat up on the entrepreneur's CV. Before you did this, what did you do? So, I have six years of corporate experience. Um, so, I joined Just Eat, where I did two and a half years there learning digital marketing. Um, I then went to Unilever for two and a half years where I did brand building and I currently work for the largest e-commerce um, platform in the world. What is it that you do specifically there? So my title is Startup Development Manager. So I recruit and then onboard uh, small businesses and my job is to accelerate their growth. So I support them with advertising, I launch them in new markets, I help them with some PR, you basically like mentor these startups. Okay. And to be open, the reason why I'm asking that yeah. is because you're in a full-time job yeah. and I'm trying to work out the balance between the effect that it's going to have on this to be able to say, I need to go all in and give up that job. And if I was to hand over 50K, could there be a level of frustration where you're going, oh, wow, Monday to Friday, you're not, you're not in it. Of and then you're now exhausted as an entrepreneur trying yeah. to do a startup because you're working full-time, so now you're running the risk of burnout. Peter Jones flags up his fears that Lucy's full-time job will relegate running her business to a part-time operation. And Stephen Bartlett is wondering if trading equity for cash is the right approach for the entrepreneur. I don't really know why you need an investor in this business. This business is so unbelievably early, you're going to end up giving away a staggering amount of your company before it's even got going, when you don't need to. You've got 70-odd K of stock there sat in your warehouse. Mm -hmm. Why don't you sell all that stock and then come back to investors at that point and say, look, yeah. I've proven the market, I've learnt, then you're only going to be giving away a fraction of your business for that 50K you're asking for. Yeah, my rationale is this is very copyable. The product itself doesn't have a patent. So for me, launching with a bang and getting as much support behind me as possible at this really early stage is really important. Lucy, you're very good. You're very impressive. But. However, I don't think this business is at a stage where it's ready for an investment. I actually don't think you should be even asking for an investment okay. at this stage. I wish you the very, very best, but um, I'm going to say that I'm out. Lucy loses her first dragon as Stephen Bartlett rejects her strategy for success. Is Deborah Meaden any more receptive to the investment proposition? I think you've asked for too much money. OK. You're asking for £50,000 on a business that at the moment has turned over 10000 Yeah. It's too big an ask yeah. for an absolutely finger-in-the-air guess on what's going to happen next. So I won't be investing. Apparently. I'm out. Lucy, um, I am that customer, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I had a, a bad illness a few years ago. So I'm on blood thinners, hydrocortisone, right. cholesterol, you name it, I take it. But I'm healthy, thank God. Right. Um, and I do understand that if you are instructed to take pills during the day, yeah. they can be awkward. Yeah. So, so there is definitely a market. 100%. Um, 100%. I do like your energy Thanks. and your enthusiasm. So I'm going to make you an offer. But, but it's going to come at a price. I'm willing to give you half the money. OK. But I want 20%. It's giving you that lifeline if another dragon feels the same way. Understood. Well, thank you ever so much. Oh, my God. Lucy's luck is on the turn as Tuka Suleiman buys into her positive vibes and tables a bid. But his half offer will only mean anything if another dragon joins him. Will Peter Jones be willing to stump up the other £25,000?
The big issue that I have is the fact that you've got this job. Yep. And I think it's wrong for you to give up that job currently. OK. So that's why I'm going to make you a very different offer. Oh, my God. Sorry. I'm going to offer you a job within our portfolio where you will work with brands, you will gain knowledge at a faster rate that you currently can gain that level of knowledge. OK. You will also be able to work on the business as well. Mm -hmm. And I will also offer you £25,000 for this business at 20% and join forces with Tuca. Okay. Lucy. Hi. I think you're brilliant. You just seem like somebody who'd be brilliant to work with. So the proposition I'd like to put to you okay. is I will give you all of the money today for a 35% stake in your business. But if you return me my 50,000 within the next 18 months, yeah. I will drop my stake to what you've asked for at the 25%. So that's my offer. Thank you so much. A third dragon swoops in with a bid for a smaller cut. That meant a lot to you, didn't it? I could see it in your face. <laughs> Am I not hiding it very well? Sarah Davies' offer of 35%, reducing to 25 when she gets her money back, has left Lucy shell-shocked. Do you need to speak to the wall? Yeah. Yeah. Peter Jones and Tuka Suleiman have joined forces, but are demanding a 40% chunk. And in a move rarely before seen in the den, Peter is also throwing in a job offer. He really doesn't say very much, does he? Thank you all so much for that unbelievable offers. Oh, I really don't want to get eaten alive. Is there any way at all of bringing Sarah in? so we could have three dragons. Blimey, you really do want your cake and eat it today, don't you? Yeah, but with, with some tablets afterwards. <laughs> yeah. God. So your counter-proposal is split the 50,000 investment by three dragons, yeah. and we would then have 40% of the company for that 50,000. Yeah. Go on. I, without doubt, would relish working with Sarah and Tuka on this to get you. So I'm very happy if Sarah and Tuka are happy. Honestly, Lucy, I would be more than up for that. I'm in. Are you accepting that offer? Yes, 100%. Thank Great. you so much. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. stuff. Yeah. Thank you so, so much, guys. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Lucy entered the den feeling terrified. Oh, my Oh, my God. She leaves with no regrets. I nearly pulled out of this opportunity six times last week because I was absolutely petrified and I felt that I wasn't good enough to be here. So if there's something you want to do and you're terrified, go and do it, because that could be the outcome. <laughs> <laughs>